60 Minutes, Rewind. If there is one newspaper the White House is less than enchanted with, it is the expletive-deleted Washington Post, whose diligence and persistence almost single-handed flushed out the Watergate story. 550,000 copies of this paper circulate every day. It is the only morning newspaper in the most powerful capital in the world. Along with the New York Times, the most influential people in America read it. What kind of paper is it? What kind of people run it? Any story about the Post must begin with Benjamin Crowninshield Bradley, 52, its fast-talking, chain-smoking, cocky executive editor. Did, did you read it, for Christ's sake? Yes, he did. Uh, we missed it the first time. He did. Mm -hmm. You were moving your lips too fast. A Washington newsman for a quarter century, he came to the Post via Harvard, the Diplomatic Service, and Newsweek magazine. It is Bradley who said go to those investigative stories in the early days when the Post was all alone on Watergate, and the White House was denying it and the rest of the press corps ignoring it. It's a pretty good story, Cole. Yeah. It is Bradley who said go only after he had grilled his two young reporters, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein. He insisted they come up with two independent sources to verify every revelation they had dug up. Bob Woodward. Bradley said at the time he was going to hold our heads in a pail of water until we came up with a story, and I mean, he said that literally. Bradley kept pushing, and Woodward and Bernstein did come up with the stories that broke Watergate. Lots of people in and near the White House think Ben Bradley is too friendly with the Democrats, especially the Kennedys, and is using the Post in a personal vendetta against Richard Nixon. Were you too close to Kennedy? I think I was, yes. People are trying to draw some comparison between Ted Kennedy and I and, and uh, Jack Kennedy and I, and I don't know Ted Kennedy very well. I mean, sure, I know who he is, and I see him, and we say hello. Think he'd be a good president? No ideas. I, I'm not political, Mike. What? I am not political. I don't care who's president. I really don't care who is president of the United States. I want to know all about him and what he's doing and how he's getting there. But who is president makes absolutely no difference to me. Well, the, I've, really, I've... truly, that is a fact. Since Bradley took over at the Post nine years ago, he's assembled a formidable array of talent, increasing the new staff to 400. Some of the nation's top political reporters work here. David Broder, Jules Whitcover, Haynes Johnson. Some say he hires three people for every job. Whoever does it best gets to stay. He's a master at knowing when to massage his staff and when to manipulate them when to cajole and when to chew them out. You get a stable of, of the talent we've got, we've got to be sure that they stay hungry. Not financially, obviously, but professionally. That takes a lot of energy. For the last two years, Bradley, managing editor Howard Simons, and a team of aggressive editors have been under extraordinary pressure to sift fact from fiction as the Watergate story developed from a third-rate burglary into the nation's biggest political scandal. Twice each afternoon, as they get the paper ready to go to press, Bradley and Simon sit down with their editors. It's a quiet bear pit. Each editor wants the front page for his stories if he can get it. In this session, one of his editors tried to convince him that a Senate Watergate Committee report on Senators Humphrey and McGovern was worth front page treatment. But what about committee? No. The story ended up on page 10. There is one precinct at the Post Bradley never invades, the conference of the editorial board. He says he hasn't been to one of these meetings in his professional life. He runs the news columns, they write the editorials that cause administration jowls to shake in anger and frustration. You might be surprised that many of those liberal editorials are written by a man who spent 19 years on the Wall Street Journal, Phil Jalan. The editorial board and Ben Bradley must satisfy a lady at the Post, dubbed by a good friend of hers, the Iron Butterfly. Catherine Graham is the publisher. Her empire includes not just the Post, but Newsweek magazine and several radio and television stations with combined revenues of a quarter of a billion dollars a year. When the White House tape transcripts revealed that the president was promising the Post damnable, damnable problems, what he had in mind was a challenge to Kay Graham's lucrative television stations, licensed by the federal government. Can you say to me truthfully, Miss Graham, that you never said to Ben Bradley, Ben, come on, we're having... It's beginning to cost us. Heavens no, I wouldn't say that, and I don't think it would move him a bit if I did. Miss Graham, did Ben Bradley never give you a sleepless night 
about his coverage of Watergate. He gave, well, the story, the stories we were running caused me grave concern. And if I hadn't, I'd have had to be, have rocks in my head. If we hadn't been right, we'd have been dead because all a newspaper has is its credibility. And our credibility was being attacked every day. Well, you did make mistakes. On the whole, comparatively few. We, ha we, we did make one or two. I wish we hadn't. But I think that when you're running 200 stories or so, which I think is about the number we ran before the election, uh, it, it is obvious that, that you can make mistakes. I think that we did not make any mistakes in any important areas. There's no blood lost in Ben Bradley. No, I think there, there is the passion I spoke of for a good story. No later than that. I think 48 hours after that, you're going to get your ass whipped by the Times. And... Getting whipped by the New York Times. If Bradley is the motor that drives the post, the motor that drives Bradley is competition. And for him, victory in that competition means beating the New York Times. The Times beat the post with some regularity until Watergate. James Reston is the Times' eminence in Washington. They knocked our socks off on uh, Watergate, and I'd be the last to deny it. Do you know why? And was it a matter of some dismay here? Yes, it was a matter of dismay here, sure. Uh, you know, I'd, we could quibble about the point, because very often uh, this is a very delicate story, and very often, I think, uh, Ben's fastball is better than his control. You know, and we, we, we care about control on the Times, maybe a little more than they do. But uh, I don't want to knock him back, you know. I, I really think that, um, I think Ben is almost good enough to be on the Times. I admire the New York Times enormously for what we call uh, cruising speed at the Washington Post. Day in, day out, they have a level of excellence which I covet. Uh, in which I do not think the Washington Post has all the time. Have you never had a sleepless night about the accuracy, the fairness of your coverage? Well, I, in that sense, every night has been sleepless. You always worry about, uh, about the fairness and about the accuracy. And you're always, you're, you're writing something that is history on the run. You've only got 24 hours to make it as polished as you can. And you, you pursue the truth, but you have to understand, and you know better than your readers, that you've only got a slice of the truth, a whole lot of slices, and all that's kicking around. The story will continue after this. Your own David Broder, who's one of the best and most respected political commentators in the country, writes this. Whenever and however Mr. Nixon's case is disposed of, the press's turn will come next. What did he mean? Well, I think he meant that the, uh, a lot of people would hold the press responsible and be sore uh, as, uh, as they could be against the press. Why? Do you know? Yes, because the, the, the possibility of something dreadful happening as a result of the press's work on Watergate is happening. It, it's there. It's a real possibility now. And the press is going to be blamed for it. And what can the press do about it, if anything? Hunker down. Hunker down and, and uh, go about our business, which is not to be loved, but to uh, go after the truth. <laughs> 